Well, this is uh, Dr. Abraham Weisfeld here speaking uh, to uh, really test that on the microphone here. But I was thinking that I might as well, you know, register an argumentation, a deductive uh, argumentation here, which uh, takes a moment to uh, record, which is very pertinent to the current conditions of the uh, genocide in Gaza. Because the defense of the Palestinians is uh, made with arguments that are at times faulty and have no effect and therefore waste uh, the energy that's put into them because of a of a contradiction which is not apparent there's a couple of such cases one is the ambiguity of uh, from a river to the sea and uh which in itself is an endorsement of a one-state solution, which uh, is uh, basically the conception in, encouraged by uh, a current of thought which emanates from a, uh, a um, an obsolete political current, you know, uh, of a populist and a ex-communist party a cadres who uh, argue for a uh, lib liberal uh, notion of the nation of of the state you know which is a pluralist and which doesn't exist anymore anywhere in the world actually and which existed in europe for a while you know when there was uh, uh, a certain um, birth of uh, of nation states there in 1648 however this is not 1648 And uh, you know, uh, and they, you know, a one-state solution is not a solution. Okay, two-state solution is not a solution either. But the recognition of Palestine in the face of Israel and various fora is now the uh, fault that I wish to address is the one that uh, makes reference uh, to armed struggle. There is a provision in international law for the right of national self-determination, which includes the uh, uh, the right of resistance, uh, both peacefully and with armed resistance. Armed resistance is not defined thereafter. It's just the two words that are mentioned in this international law. The uh, task at hand is to define what is armed resistance. The first uh, notion of armed resistance that I know of is that uh, of the Jewish Bund, because my mother's um, involvement with the uh, Jewish resistance against the Nazi occupation, particularly in Russia and previously in Poland in the Warsaw Ghetto. So this um, code of uh, military conduct by the Jewish Bund, which uh, included my uh, mother's brother, who was a partisan, was that the, it is legitimate, considered a legitimate <clears throat> both in uh, in what should be international law or military code of a reciprocal nation um, and also in, in Judaic law, is that uh, the officers of an invading army are the first target to be uh, taken out. Next is the soldiers who are engaged in uh, offensive uh, operations and killing people. And uh, three informers who informers who killed people as well by denouncing them for gain, yes, because um, prosperity is the purpose of life. Okay, so the argument of armed struggle is faulty because it is uh, not reciprocal and it is not. Um, um, and is not limited. Uh, first of all, any national liberation struggle could claim such a right, irrespective of what it is doing at the moment, right? So if a given group, given people, a given nation, are an oppressed nation and conduct a, a resistance movement for the uh, national liberation of its people are justified to use armed struggle, yes or no? 
okay, if you say yes, then in principle, you know, we're discussing this, you know, not in terms of limitations or not, but in principle, we have to consider um, that uh, this is a, a right of uh, armed struggle which can be conducted against anybody. <laughs> you know, like it's not specified, you know, against whom it can be conducted, you know. So, you know, uh, the, the Zionists took this, you know, ball and ran with it, you know, and claimed to, to be a national liberation movement, which uh, is doubtful. Uh, but the, the uh, national liberation of the Jewish people was necessary, and they claimed, you know, to be representative of the national liberation of the Jewish people who had just or uh, were undergoing a Holocaust by the Nazis for no good reason. So, um, you know, the armed struggle then, you know, was conducted by the Zionists, not against, you know, the Nazis. <laughs> no, the partisans were Pluto, you know, mostly, you know, the Bundes and uh, the Zionists who had no other choice, you know, but to resort to direct action in self-defense. Self but it was not a Zionist strategy. Zionist strategy was to run away and hide and take over somebody else's country because they had a right to national self-determination. That is the Jewish people. And the Zionists claimed to be representative of the Jewish people. So they claimed this right of the Jewish people in their own name and claimed it to be the leadership and the vanguard of the Jewish people in doing so. You know, in the face of, you know, the assimilationist Jewish population, which went and joined, you know, whatever, you know, Communist Party, Trotskyist parties, or whatever, you know, and gave up their identity. So the Zionists claimed to re be a representative of the Jewish people after the Holocaust because the Jewish Bund, which were the vanguard and the anti-fascist resistance of the Jewish people, didn't exist any longer, except for some survivors like my mother and me. So... The Zionists claimed, you know, the representative of the Jewish people, national right to self determination and all that, you know, verbiage, and the, the right to armed struggle. Against whom? Against the Palestinians. Oh, why? Because the Palestinians were in the way of the national liberation of the Jewish people, who were claiming a sovereign right, you know, to, to control the uh, land of uh, what was previously known as Israel, even though uh, the state is not considered to be Israel in Judaism. Because Israel is considered to be the name of the Jewish people as a whole and not a state and not a territory. Okay? In Hebrew, this is Hamadina Tvelo Israel. Okay, the state is not Israel. And when they say Israel, Am Yisrael Chai, they don't know what they're talking about, you know, like because that means the longer than the Jewish people it doesn't mean the state. Because the state didn't exist all the time, it only existed, you know, like for 70, 80 years previously and 75 years this time. So, you know, like Jewish people existed throughout, you know, all the time, you know. So, you know, Israel must be referring to the Jewish people, you know. It's a matter of definition. So, you know, the Zionists, you know, took over this, you know, right in the armed struggle and all that, you know, they're using against Palestinians. When the Palestinians resist, oh, well, they're only resistance because because they're Nazis, you know, and therefore they, it is required to obliterate them. Because, you know, the right of armed self-determination is not, is not limited. It's not defined, you know, with any sort of, you know, limitation. Now, when Malcolm X referred to, you know, the right of armed struggle, he uh, used the phrase, by all means necessary. But he also stated, by all means necessary, but not necessarily by all means. It depends on the context and the need now, the need, you know, for genocide of the Palestinians in Gaza is not apparent. What happened on October the 7th was not a genocidal campaign, but yet the uh, horror stories that are propagated and still are propagated of various uh, crimes against humanity that are genocidal or uh, as such in nature are uh, uh, generally not true according to the even most current uh, study conducted by Al Jazeera in the documentary called October the 7th. So the horror stories, you know, th the uh, uh, campaign of mass rapes 
is not verified by any agency, certainly not the Israel police. The uh, initial story of already beheaded um, babies and burnt uh, is not true either. You know, there are various body parts left over that were burned under tank fire that may have been the size of babies, but they weren't babies. That was delusion, delusionary. Uh, the documentary, though, does a, account, you know, and use the um, the body cam, you know, footage of various Hamas fighters showing that there was a brutal campaign of killing of civilians, especially at the Nova Festival, which they tumbled upon. And with all of the uh, fleeing Israelis, you know, who came there in, in such a naive fashion, even though they're the soldier, soldier's age, um, they come there with a, without even their arms. Then even then, you know, when the border police, you know, showed up, you know, 57 or 53, depending on the account, ended up being uh, killed because they were overwhelmed. The number of uh, Palestinian uh, fighters that invaded was 1,200. And all along the border, you know, they eliminated, you know, the entire military court cauldron, took, you know, a lot of, you know, military hostages that weren't resisting. Uh, fighting back and so they became hostages they were they were captured before they could fight back or whatever you know including the generals and including the, the uh, general you know of the whole uh gaza brigade are hostage uh and right now up to now you know they still are you know so if they haven't been bombed so the limitations you know like uh by all means necessary, but not necessarily by all means, you know. So how do you determine this dichotomy? How do you determine this, this dialectic? Well, that's to be discussed, isn't it? And as I mentioned, you know, there is the Jewish Bundes Code of military engagement, which is officers, soldiers, and uh, deadly informers. And that's it. No civilians allowed. Okay. Waiting to do the next here and now session today with Steve Struggle. This is Dr. Abraham Weisfeld here saying.